Alrighty, so here we are back again on the bench already. Uh, I hadn't intended being back here so soon, but it's uh, what, episode 7 already. So um, I went out this morning for a spin on the bike. I think at about, uh, it's what, Saturday here. It's it's uh, late at night now. Uh, it's normally raining here always, so I said, right, sunshine, I'll go out on the bike. And when I came back, I uh, saw to my amazement, I had over, I think, 1,100 subscribers, which is like 400 subscribers in two days so let's just keep the traction going for the time being now um, as I said it was a fabulous day and it was great to get out get out on the bike I live as some of you know I live in the west of Ireland so um, you've got the the wild Atlantic way which was spectacular today so you see the Atlantic down along the coastline so I did about what 350 350 miles on the um, the R1200 GS, the old reliable. Not everyone's cup of tea, but uh, it's, uh, it's a good machine. Anyway, as I said in the, the previous video, the, the, the um, heat exchanger and piston type accumulator, I just want to go back and touch on this part briefly because it is for sale. So if it goes, I want to make sure I have all aspects covered in the part. So. It's for sale up there on the coffee link and also shout out to um what is his username uh mast here um he sponsored three coffees today which was like 15 euro which will go towards you know video time or or um possibly new camera hopefully uh, there was another user saying there that the sound isn't great so i'm hoping to upgrade soon to a, a proper camera um and it'll just make things a bit easier but a uh, shout out to him and again this part here is for sale the entire part up there click on the coffee cup click on commissions and you'll see it in there and i want to just do one more shout out before we start off to the a user called the indian um he was on to me in the comment section about doing you know doing teardown parts on the teardowns of parts on moto gp but sadly it's not my avenue um, unless you want to send me a, a MotoGP bike, <laughs> I'll be I'll be happy to, to tear it down and bring it for a spin, but um, it's not going to happen. But uh, I was thinking it today when I was spinning out on the Wild Atlantic Way in, in the west of Ireland. So um, yeah. So this part you've seen it briefly before in a previous video. I think it was number three. Uh, I'm not hundred percent sure with uh, the F1 hydraulic pump video. It featured over here in the video for a moment. Um, it's it's a parker pump but on the end of it is a is a accumulator now this accumulator differs to the accumulator we spoke about in the last video which was the piston type this is a diaphragm type now because this wasn't opened or i've never seen the inside of it and because it's for sale you know it could go tomorrow I've, i'll never see it again and you wouldn't either i decided to just do a video now it's not going to be as long as the other videos and the other ones i think are about 45 minutes long this will probably be about 20 um, but I just want to cover the, the accumulator because it's a diaphragm type. So, um, yeah, it, you know, it'll be nice to see the inside of it and just show you. I know what it looks like inside because I just, I, it's, this is my, you know, this is what I do. Um, but I want to show you in case it goes. So the, the pump is the normal, the normal Parker pump. It's nothing, nothing special, but it is mounted to a, uh, an accumulator a diaphragm accumulator as as mentioned so i've opened these nuts here there's there's three of them these nuts hold it on again with the the washers the aluminium washers uh so i've taken them off already and i've loosened up everything just so it'll be kind of swift so let's pull it off the main pump housing so there they are separated so this as you know is the pump unit now again it's not unlike the other one they're um they're fairly standard they're an aerospace part and as said made by parker you can get them in a various displacements uh, i think this is actually the smallest one it's used in aerospace as well for um for what will i call it you know um airline control or, or flight surface controls and it's a nice unit and you can go back check it out in the other videos but uh it's pretty much the same now the only thing that's different here is the 
the adapter plate which looking at it this pump has a few serial numbers on it now I'll just show you the serial numbers because it was asked by one guy so there are the serial numbers on this pump all right the AP is the company which I can't think of the name of which Parker Hannafin bought out um, they were a previous company so they bought them but they kept the AP prefix the part number is there and uh, it's uh, made in Germany obviously now this from from what I recall is a revised part and you can see it there you can see that the initial part number has been X'd out and another one has been stamped on now this could be you know this could have been a, a factory part that they supplied and if if Honda this is of a Honda F1 car if Honda wanted a different specification it might you know be narrower here or or slight changes but it's got a, a different uh, part number now they may have built it in-house in that the part number would follow on for all the parts but this part here the adapter plate which I'll call it looks like it was made in-house by Honda uh, I don't think it's a Parker part just because it looks so different and it's it's not as you know aerospacey if you want as the rest of the pump so uh, that's that's possibly a part made in house it's got the the mounts here as well the the nvh mounts uh, noise vibration harshness they will be rubber mounts for mounted to the car um actually just just before i go deep into it just to show you where the pump would sit on the car this is the the drive end here so it will sit like this and if i just grab a manifold for one for one moment just so you So just to show you the, the length of an engine, um, hopefully you can see that manifold in its entirety, you can, yeah. Um, so this is a scavenge manifold of a Cosworth, what was it off? A Cosworth um, TJ V10. Uh, this would sit along the, the bottom of the sump. Again, this would be mounted lower in the car because it's, it's high mass, it would be um, lower center of gravity. So this would sit, let's say here, the pump would sit there and the uh, alternator would sit here and again the, the timing chest would be out here so it'll be all driven through the alternator and then into this pump here so it's it's quite a big part you know um, like it's it's half the length of the scavenger manifold but that gives you an idea roughly of where where it would sit um, pulling that away for a moment you can see the, the spline drive in there where it gets driven off the alternator rear um, but that's beside the point again sealing there's a uh, two different type seals there's one which we're used of the, the o-ring and the the anti-extrusion ring which would be I don't know what it would be PTFE or peak so you can see it there just to stop the o-ring squeezing out under pressure um, it keeps it backed up and this then would fit in there into that housing here now because there's you know stack up or tolerance issues they've chosen to do two different seal types so this one mounts radially in a bore and this one here mounts on the face so that's just a flat a flat seal here and a flat one here it would mount you know directly onto that surface now looking at it they probably did that not so much because the tolerance stack up because you could machine two you could machine two of these here it would be no problem um but i think the reason they did that is to have them again these bolts here have quite high tolerance shoulders on them you can see there they're almost like dowel pins and those ones aren't so i think this dowel pin here would register this very exactly on on this on this uh, stud here so the two bores would be in line with each other and there would be no flow restriction like there's quite a big flow restriction with this as you can see it's down to about four four and a half five mil but with this one here there'd be no flow restriction which makes sense because it is the 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 flow from the pump pressure side 
into the diaphragm side. Um, so that's why I imagine they did that. So let's leave the pump aside over there. As I said, this part is for sale up there, right inside coffee cup and commissions. So this part, beautiful, beautiful part. I mean, look at that. Started from a chunk of billet, you know, like five inches by five inches by five inches and done on a four axis for, for definite because you can see the tool marks here, which there's actually a few incorrect tool marks, but we'll get to those in a moment. So you can see all the tool marks. Hopefully it zooms in. Um, there's one coming down here diagonally, follows it around here, follows all the way around, and again, follows up here and here. You can see the, the scallops, the, the resolution, but overall the, the tooth path resolution and offset it's just amazing you know um like it's almost shining just from the sh like this wasn't this wasn't polished that's off the machine something else but getting back to machining again um so with the part like this this is hollow inside it's about a two and a half minute wall you'd rough out the outside you'd rough the inside because the part will the billet will move a lot um and if you were to machine all the outside and then try and go for a, a finished diameter on the inside, you know, it, it it would move and you wouldn't get your tolerances. Now, there's one spot here that I spotted, just one area here, where I think they did the roughing on the outside a bit too heavy <clears throat> before they roughed the inside. And you can see there's a, there's a machining mark there where the part probably moved, I would say. And uh, it just went below the the datum or the, the the design envelope uh there was another one i think somewhere else did i get them all no that might be the only one um but again not uncommon there was one more yeah there's one more here that looks like a fault as well um but again you know not not at all important it's uh, it's the part is perfect you know and obviously past service um because there was oil in it so it was ran and it was marked not for further race because it had done i think uh, 1200 kilometers so it has been ran but um getting back to how it's made and what's the deal these are all different ports for the oil now these are these are um just plugs for when it's not in service again this is a plug just take it out there and show you there's no ring on it and you're drilling down there again nothing nothing fancy another plug there these ones are, are captive with the with the nuts and you just screw out the titanium retainer these pull out you connect your pipes they're color coded they're probably flow and return i don't know the, like you'd imagine the flow would be the hot and the return would be the cold who knows um now this this fitting here took uh, a bit of thinking generally like my day job is designing parts um with the highest levels of function or functionality with the least amount of um actual parts in the the entire component so this one here which i'll get into in a moment this is a secondary part like it's like a, a banjo fitting um now if I take off this here, which again is a plug, this is this is where they would purge the the nitrogen into the far side or the the, the yeah the far side of the diaphragm. Um, it's the normal, it's your normal tire valve, the the, the Schrader valve. You can see it there, hopefully, yep. Um, now because this is a secondary part, it's a huge problem with parts like this in engineering um if i was doing this i wouldn't like to have this a secondary part but they chose to do it that way you could machine this integral with this part here this is titanium by the way so is this um i'd like to be seeing this machined integral with this but because this is threaded you screw this in here and it's threaded so you're not really sure where it stops in terms of where the threads are tight enough 
you know, with your torque values. So you have to be able to clock this so that it's on a position in the car where you can fill it. Now, looking at other parts for a moment, not related to Formula 1 at all, this is a part of an old jack, um, a really old jack, like as in 70 years old, where you would, this is a, a trolley jack valve which controls the, the trolley jack to let it down or lock it off to jack the, the, the car. But you'll always find a differential thread or a, a vernier thread Whereas, you know, you need to be able to clock this in the correct place. So if you just had this, let's just take off this for a moment. If you just had this part screwing into the body, now depending on where your machinist threaded this or where the thread started, this could finish up anywhere. So, you know, it could be locking off here. And this just closes a ball bearing on a seat to lock the, the oil way. But it could finish here, here, or here. So that wouldn't suit the, the design, you know. So this is why you need the secondary piece, which is also threaded on the inside and the outside. So you can thread that in there. And you can then clock this and get this to, to lock in the right place. Now the, the downfall of that is you need this clocking against a hard surface. So what's in front of this either needs to be a compressible seal or it needs to be, a, you know, shimmed or turned so that you can lock that. If you want to lock this here, you have to machine a small bit more off the face of this here to get it to lock in the right place. So there's a threading start issue and there's a threading tolerance issue. So this could end up literally anywhere. So that's why I don't really like coaxial things like that um, and why they need to exist. Again, this is another part here which I was asked to redesign. Um, same thing again, but uh, a conical seat. Again, I included the the M4 to be able to, to pull this apart. Um, a simple hydraulic needle valve, which would uh, go in here, that would thread in there. There would be a, it was, I think, a, a phosphor bronze seat here, which this needle would locate into to block the oil. And the oil then would, when it was blocked, it would be able to flow in here and out here. But why they came to me was because this was a secondary part again, and this needed clocking, depending on where this would lock so what they were doing was turning this part down here depending on where these threads were started or where the threads in the housing were started where this would finish up when it was tight and it was just a nightmare so that all got redesigned and uh, I can't show you the final design sadly because it's a uh, nd8 but it's something I don't like to see is a coaxial coaxial um, stack ups like this so in a nutshell, that's why this part is secondary. Um, it adds extra weight and more seals, but uh, they just chose to do this way because they didn't know where this was going to tighten. And I hopefully should now be able to open this and show you the inside. So if I just wheel this open, again, this is aluminium seven or two series, not sure. Doesn't really matter, but it's not six series. Um, which is the the choice of the, the aluminium on the internet, the aerospace aluminium. So if we take off this here, again, hydraulic oil in here, that grid there, and this is pressurized, the other side of the diaphragm. So let's just unscrew this. It's actually quite a rough thread. And there we are. So let's look at this part first. So this is where the oil would come out of the pump on the high pressure side. Now, as, as mentioned in the, the previous videos, the accumulator acts like a capacitor. It damps the, the pulsations from the pump. It also acts as a, as a thermal expansion zone so when your oil gets hot it's going to expand it has to go somewhere and it also acts if you've got um actuators which are moving which have you know differential displacement values the oil needs to to go somewhere so it can it can take up this volume here which is springy and and filled with air inside nitrogen um Again, the, the, the main one, as mentioned in a previous video by someone that commented, which I forgot to mention, 
um, a pump would, by its nature, I think that there was, was it six or eight fingers or um, pump dowels in the pump, so it would, it would, its output would be like that. So ideally, you want to, you know, smooth them off or, you know, rectify them, and then smooth them off again in electronic terms, like capacitor, so that your 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 line pressure would be you know more like that you don't want high peaks um so that's why this is required the diaphragm type um again it's it's like the human body your your arteries are, are flexible for a reason your your heart pulsations you know they're as you've seen on hospital programs they're they're again like this so your arteries smooth down those pulsations in uh, the the blood pressure before it gets to you know very small arteries in your brain and, and other places which the the high pressure spikes might rupture which not to be grim but as you get older your act your arteries harden and the pressure spikes don't get smoothed out and they make it into your brain into the the arteries or in your lungs or your brain and they'll rupture your arteries so um yeah keep those arteries soft if you can but getting back to formula one tech <laughs> um so this goes in here locates in here just turn the right way again this locates in here as shown there's a an o-ring seal here inside uh, again these parts aren't anodized so you know it's it's wide open to galling but it's probably oiled before it was screwed together because this is titanium this is aluminium not good without anodize or some sort of barrier but you wouldn't be taking it apart much so i guess it was fine um so if i just take off this nut hopefully i don't need help yeah what i'm going to do is just pause it for a moment and get back in a second get a spanner whip that off and uh, i shall be back so all right so thankfully the the honda f1 team flew in and uh, they supplied me with this it's marked drop forge so it must be good <laughs> um so let's uh, unscrew this Again, this is what I'd call a standard banjo fitting, but not an off-the-shelf part made in house. Um, this is just a cap with an O-ring to keep the dust out. And obviously it's a seal as well with an O-ring, just in case this valve fails, the, the shredder valve fails, it uh, keeps the nitrogen in. So let's just give you a close look at that. Nothing too special, normal banjo your 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 tire valve there and the gold cap screws on again anodized just on the outside because anodized is not sorry anodized is not the best surface for an airtight seal so generally you wouldn't anodize where you want an airtight seal because it's quite porous so it's uh, just the machine finish on the inside which mates the o-ring there like so so that's that part now moving on to the the rest of the part and the diaphragm itself now again just to touch on this this diaphragm here is let's call it rubber um i don't know the spec um again metals and plastics are my speciality i'm not awfully up to speed on rubber you know if you want a competent guess what the diaphragm is made from you're welcome to but uh, i'm not going to um now as i said before in the previous video these diaphragm accumulators are susceptible to failure because if the pressure is is incorrect on the oil side or the air side they will actually you know damage themselves or just literally explode so this is why if you look here you can see the the oil entry port 
is a load of little tiny holes like a, a diffuser um they're about what 1.5 millimeters or two millimeters in diameter so that's because if you inflate this and there's no oil in the system the the diaphragm will actually extrude out that hole if it was just a, a 12 mil hole and uh, and burst obviously so that's why it's done like that it just provides more of a surface area and it can't extrude as easily out through those small little holes so taking off the diaphragm that's the diaphragm so here's your entry port that the banjo goes on to your two uh, o-rings and again the the nut would go on here like that to hold on the banjo now when it's all clamped together this has got a hex machined into it uh it would be machined and not broached because it'll just make more sense but that's got a hex machine in there and again a sealing surface here for the the top of the the diaphragm to to mount against um so if we take off this fill port you can see it's a big washer which when it's tightened against this area here this high ring here pr provides a high energy area and squeezes the the rubber against this providing a, a labyrinth seal they are offset you know they're not they're not the same diameter so they are offset so they provide a, a stepped or a labyrinth seal which squeezes it tight and uh, keeps the air in so again titanium very light and a beautiful part I mean the cost of making these parts is astronomical there's a, a QR code as well actually on there I've actually seen Q QR codes on all the Honda parts. I haven't seen anything else. So yeah, someone wants to scan that. It'll probably bring up absolutely nothing, I'd say. But there it is. And again, the, the nitrogen entry port to the diaphragm is in there. So let's look at the, the diaphragm bladder itself. So sometimes these can be, you know, like a donut or they can be just one sheet, but this is the donut type diaphragm. Uh, it's quite, uh, it's quite firm, you know, quite small volume too. So that would sit in there and the oil then, this will be pressurized with nitrogen. It's, um, the reason nitrogen is used, which was touched on in a future video or a previous video is because it's, um, more stable at higher temperature. It doesn't expand as much as air. And as far as I know, the, the molecules are a bit bigger, so they don't creep past seals as easily. Now, how this was made is anyone's guess. I see a parting line there, so it was possibly injection molded with a collapsible core or, you know, poured. I'm not sure. As I said, I'm not up to speed with rubbers. Yeah, it's hard to know. Um, I see like a mark there, like a sprue. So possibly was injection molded. Um, now again, these could be a standard part, but this definitely isn't. You know, this could be off the shelf, just a, a Parker Hannifin diaphragm type accumulator assembly. Uh, just to show you that again, that goes in there, and it would locate in here. Now, one thing that I saw is interesting is there's a lot of fretting on these surfaces, which to me, and I can even see it, um, is grit. So this fretting here with the, the pulsations in the, the pump and the actuators, it's almost like it's sandblasted. I'll just take you in there. You can see how the surface is pretty rough. And again, it's it's rough here. We would be expanding and contracting. So this would probably be a result of, again, you can see the the impressions there of the, the roughness. 
so possibly a fault of gen general you know system um, cleanliness or just contaminants before they got into the the filters but it's definitely there but again nothing to worry about this is what one mil thick so it'll be well able for it but uh, just something to note that possibly it wasn't flushed enough so yeah that's pretty much it um i just said i do it because i had it and it is for sale on the the buy me a coffee link up there click on commissions if you want to buy it or if you just even want to look at it you probably seen enough of it here but uh yeah that's that nice part again the the, the blankers which i spoke about these are um lee micro hydraulics they just press in and you press them in and, and it locks off the drillings there would be one drilling here one in here and one in here this has to be blanked so that's blanked they probably are not yeah there's another one here so this drilling here is needed to get access into the 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 central pressure system drilled in here this would supply out here and this then will be blanked but yeah that's that i think it was great to cover it and possibly longer than i intended to but it's uh as i said it could be gone tomorrow and uh, we'd never see it again but it's important that i share it and that you guys know what's going inside so uh yeah that's that so right as always share the video if you think it's interesting or if you have colleagues that think it's you know that work in this business or think it's cool or um subscribe buy me coffee or don't do any of that just sit back and enjoy the video um of what i'm presenting all right guys i'll talk to you soon with more uh cool stuff that has never seen before good luck